Initializing report, U-89S, subject, biological motherboard. Item number, SCP-003, object class, Euclid. Special containment procedures. SCP-003 is to be maintained at a constant temperature of no less than 35 degrees Celsius and ideally kept above 100 degrees Celsius. No living multicellular organisms of Category 4 or higher complexity may be allowed to come in contact with SCP-003. In event of total power failure, if SCP-003-1 begins to increase its mass, assigned personnel must engage in skin contact with SCP-003-1. Ideally, personnel may use their body heat to return SCP-003-1 to above the critical temperature. However, skin contact must be maintained even in event of SCP-003 reaching activation temperature, lasting at minimum until SCP-003-1 advances fully to its second growth stage. Personnel who enter SCP-003's containment area must first be examined for body parasites of Category 4 or higher complexity and sterilized if such organisms are present. All personnel who have come in physical contact with SCP-003-1 are to immediately report for sterilization afterwards. SCP-003-1 must not be removed from SCP-003-2 except in case of emergency procedures detailed above. Any significant change in SCP-003-2's rune activity, including pattern, frequency, or color, should be reported within three hours of occurrence. Cessation of rune activity must be reported immediately. SCP-003-2 must be supplied with power via the source-designated generator 003-9 at all times. Description SCP-003 consists of two related components of separate origin, referred to as SCP-003-1 and SCP-003-2. SCP-003-1 appears to be composed of chitin, hair, and nails of unknown biology arranged in a configuration similar to that of computer motherboard. Testing reveals SCP-003-1 to predate earliest known circuit boards by a factor of thousands of years. SCP-003-1 is considered sentient but not actively dangerous except under certain conditions. SCP-003-1 was found on a stone tablet, SCP-003-2, on which it currently resides. The runes on SCP-003-2 are not part of any known language and emit pale, flickering light patterns. SCP-003-2 is controlled by a non-biological internal computer, the contents of which are mostly inaccessible without risk of damaging SCP-003-2. SCP-003-2 is capable of controlled emissions of radiation, including heat, light, and anomalous radiation types. SCP-003-2 contains an internal power source of an anomalous nature, which appears to have been losing power since several centuries before discovery. It is considered probable that SCP-003-2 was created for the purpose of containing SCP-003-1. Partially interpreted data recovered from SCP-003-2 may refer to a past and or potential future LK-class restructuring event caused by SCP-003-1. SCP-003 was located by remote viewing team SRV-04 Beta. It appears possible that SRV-04 Beta was deliberately contacted by SCP-003-2. Other organizations have also been alerted to SCP-003's existence, possibly by similar means. Despite this activity, SCP-003-2 does not appear to be sentient based on its lack of reaction to M03 Gloria analysis and procedures. 
When SCP-003 drops below the temperature of 35 degrees Celsius, both components react. First, SCP-003-1 enters a growth state characterized by exponential increase in mass. This growth stage consists of two stages. In both stages, SCP-003-1 partially fuels its growth by converting matter around it, starting with any surrounding inorganic material, including atmospheric elements, then non-living organic material, including cells of dead skin, hair, chitin, enamel, keratin, and other biological materials. The first stage is always the same. SCP-003-1 will first increase its mass, then take a form similar in shape to an ophiroid, brittle star, of 15 meters in diameter, including what appears to be a central processor of 3 meters in diameter. It will form sensory organs that appear to scan its surrounding environment, and will partially convert the area around it to an unidentified anomalous substance. SCP-003-2 seems immune from conversion. The second stage describes a growth alteration, which occurs when SCP-003 comes into contact with living organic material. SCP-003 appears to template itself off the organic material and will attempt communication with organisms that match its initial template or templates. In its second stage, SCP-003-1 may pause, slow, or change its growth, and will also convert inorganic and non-living organic elements into functionally similar structures while anomalously altering their physical makeup. While growth is consistent in the first stage, in the second stage, SCP-003-1's growth rate is diminished by 20 to 90 percent so long as SCP-003-1 remains in contact with living organic material. The percentage is determined by the complexity of the organisms in contact with SCP-003-1. SCP-003-1 appears to devote a large amount of processing power to analysis of living organic material. During each of SCP-003-1's growth stages, SCP-003-2 releases bursts of radiation that temporarily inhibit SCP-003-1's growth, or reverses growth when the temperature of SCP-003-1 rises above 100 degrees Celsius. Similar, radiation emissions have been replicated and recorded via other anomalous means. SCP-003-1's biology has been the subject of extensive study. Significant elements have been identified similar to SCP-1512 SCP and SCP-2756, the latter two of which have no further confirmed connection with SCP-003-1 and no known connection with each other and none of which are fully understood. Technically, even less understood than SCP-003, thanks to the extent of cross-disciplinary research on the SCP-003 objects. To date, no convincing analysis has been put forward which satisfactorily explains SCP-003-1's connection to these SCP objects or others, nor its connection to modern technology beyond appearance and potential mimicry via unknown mechanism. Addendum 003-01 Acting on information gathered from linguistic analysis of SCP-003-2's runes and comparative data analysis, Research Team M03 Gloria has managed to establish a link between SCP-003 and data removed for analysis of functions. SCP-003-1 must now be considered sentient and is to be kept a minimum of one kilometer from data removed and the resulting byproduct at all times. Addendum 003-02 SCP-003-2's power loss has been exacerbated by the procedures performed by M03 Gloria. On orders of 05-10, M03 Gloria will continue procedures. Addendum 003-03 During M03 Gloria procedures, SCP-003-1 
doubled its mass and began rapid structural growth. Temperature was immediately returned to 100 degrees Celsius. Growth and mass increase of SCP-003-1 continued for 9 minutes and 6 seconds, at which time a sustained radiation spike was produced by SCP-003-2. In response, SCP-003-1 returned to its normal state in 3 minutes and 39 seconds. New growth dissolved into a dusty residue which was collected for analysis. Both SCP-003-1 and SCP-003-2 ceased all detectable activity. SCP-003-2 did not resume activity until connected to an external power source. SCP-003-2's runes glowed uniformly gray and did not resume normal activity for three hours. SCP-003-2 no longer appears to be able to maintain containment area at a temperature above 35 degrees Celsius without external power supplied by generator 003-3 through 9. Addendum 003-4 the procedure detailed in Addendum 003-3 was repeated and SCP-003-1 again entered a growth state. After 10 minutes and 13 seconds, SCP-003-2 once again produced a sustained radiation spike. SCP-003-1's growth stopped for 36 seconds, then resumed at its previous pace. On quadrupling its mass, SCP-003-1 formed a coherent outer shell and body. After appearing to scan its environment and partially converting its environment, SCP-003-1 then breached containment, entering the observation gallery where nine members of M03 Gloria were present. On physical contact with team members, SCP-003-1 encompassed them in rapidly grown appendages and stopped growth for 15 minutes. SCP-003-1 then resumed growth and rearranged the component parts of the center of its form to the shape of a 3 meter tall female humanoid with peripheral tentacles shifting to extrude primarily from SCP-003-1's newly formed hair and spine. SCP-003-1 then produced rudimentary vocalizations in an apparent initial attempt to communicate with researchers. Further data removed. An unknown individual approached the compromised containment area in company of a full squad of agents. The individual claimed to be acting on orders of O5-10 and attempted communication with SCP-003-1. Further data removed. Following this incident, Agent Jackson of M03 Gloria successfully restored power to SCP-003-2 and activated backup generators to return the temperature to 100 degrees Celsius. SCP-003-1 returned to its normal state in 21 minutes and 7 seconds and was successfully recontained without incident. All nine members of M03 Gloria affected by SCP-003-1 were afterwards found to be physically unharmed, with no residual effects besides psychological trauma. The converted materials of SCP-003's former containment area did not dissolve and are now under analysis. Addendum 003-5 In light of the previous incident, O5-10 was removed from the O5 Council by joint decisions of O5-, O5-, and O5-. M03 Gloria procedures have been indefinitely suspended. Report U-89S terminated.